you know? Silencer okay. can actually, like, commit to the lane and, uh... Yeah, Silencer's a, a pretty value. shitty four. I guess that's maybe just a fair response. Yeah, I'd rather have three well. than four. Like, five is fine, because, you know, I, I just have my ult right, or whatever. Right. But, okay. I mean, you guys have all played versus the snowballing silencer and pubs. You know what it's like. It's, it's starts getting a couple items. It definitely picks up momentum, and you've got a lone druid pugna, so secret can definitely play a fast and big game. You can take objectives, you win team fights, you can certainly push towers. So, very solid you draft. I like what secret has a lot. You know what's cooking? Prepare for battle. Uh, I think overall, I would rather have the Virtus Pro Prodigy lineup, though. That'll say. The Virtus Pro Prodigy lineup is much more conventional. Absolutely perfect. If you took teams out of it, I would probably rather be on the Radiant side. Yep, yeah, I'm with you there. Enchdark Willow, that's a pretty deadly support duo. They've got a lot of kill power in these lanes. <laughs> Excited to see this Viper versus Pugna matchup also. I think it's just going to wind up being a kill the creeps matchup, though. But the decreps, Trent. The value. Is that where you're at now? You can only enjoy Dota if there's kills. You can't appreciate the nuance of a skill matchup, well, Trent. It's just there's not a lot of interaction, I don't think. It's kind of like some solo lanes, you know? They're both just looking at creeps and barely uh, acknowledging one another. The Viper's going to do his best to, but the Pugna's probably going to be like, yeah, I don't really want any part of this. Does Pugna have a range advantage? 630 compared to the 575, so a very slight one. Still about uh, 5 to the 1 odds here. Begins. I will say they both have like decent rotation potential between like the decrep and just even a couple slows from the poison attack, right? Mm-hmm. There is uh there is potential for it to pop off as Poppy sneaks in, takes that rune right from under DM's nose. He's done this a couple of times and he has little, the same move. A little more safe though, I guess, because Yapsor did see Lil as well as save chasing him. So Puppy knew that it wasn't gonna be a three on one. He had some intel that he might be able to get away with this. Now, the CM is pretty slow. 280 movement speed. Oh, good battery assault. That saves him, though. If, if there was any risk... didn't stun either. Yeah, that's true. So, he absorbed TPs. That's fine. No first blood. And three runes secured for Team Secret. And Dab on that just has Zai in a bit of a 1v1 at the moment here. Until the edge gets down here. Void versus Silencer. That should be okay for Silencer. Check out this mid lane already. Viper and Nisha. No. Or GPK and Nisha trading some blows. As Lil almost brings down Puppy, but not quite enough damage at level 1. Uh, Matsu probably... How good's a Deso build this game? Looks alright. Helps them get like the Roche and stuff. Keep pushing these towers. I don't know. Now it feels like it's uh, Secret who are going to be in the shoes of Virtus Pro Project Radiant's from last game, right? Where they're going to try and get quite a bit done on the earlier end of things. Their uh, their scaling is not that incredible. They have a lot of cheese though. Uh, between like these silencer damage, just kind of stacking up with the the uh, steals and getting crazy. The life drain onto the bear. Yep. Kind of shenanigans abound here. Yeah, absolutely. See Zai laying into Epileptic Kid already. I'm just stealing all that int. That's a pretty stupid void. 200 mana. Also curious what items we'll see Zai go for this game. Maybe like a four staff Hurricane Pike. Yeah, Pike seems really strong this game. Yeah. And, I mean, it's a core silencer. It's not, <laughs> I don't think it's a whole lot of options. All right, a 2-1-2. Two, two. Nothing unpredictable about these lanes. Yeah, the real no question I'll be looking for uh, is can they create any kills with this Dark Will on the Mars up top, right? Because this is a kill lane. This is yeah. why people pick it in pups. You're trying to set something up, uh, but with the bear, you're always going to be working on this creep manipulation and try and ensure that you're not going to be put in those scenarios. Yapsor does get the cogs on to save. 
save. Gonna be okay, though. Makes it back. His courier, on the other hand, might not be so lucky. Yapsor right. finds it. How does this guy do this? Like, he, he always plays around this stupid tree when he is playing four down here, right? He yeah. just knows the times. Yeah, he sits in fog, waits until the courier shows up, and then he just commits. He was doing it with DK. He killed, like, two couriers with position four DK two days ago. Yeah. How? I don't know. A lot of damage now. TP in from the Willow. Epileptic Kid, he'll be pushed back. Yapsor getting low in the tree line. They need some vision, though. Lil not able to hit him with that Shadow Realm extra damage. Now he'll try to TP, but it won't work. First blood for Epileptic Kid. First blood. <laughs> Big That's a good rotation. It's like killing the Lone Druid is just so damn hard. You know? Especially at the early levels. I mean, Willow ramps up. She has some cooldown issues, level one. Yeah. And then once the level starts stacking up, though, then Matsu's going to have the Savage Roar. And that's like, when we used to see Lone Druid more often, I remember Chen was like the only hero that could actually gank him because you could like stagger your units and create some sort of like stun opportunities. We'll see if they uh, stay committed to this tri lane down here. The other problem with Willow, too, uh, mana early on. She's uh, very dependent on clarities. Totally dry right now with no regen. And they will TP the Enchantress up top. Radiance middle and as that happens, Puppy also rotates bottom. So now Secret has a three on two down bottom with the solo Matumba man up top. Yeah, and that wave is not moving down to Epileptic Kid anytime soon. He's just running to the tree trying to get XP at the moment. Yeah, that's not great. Thank you. I Jesus, body blocks from Zai too, damn. He's really making life hard down here. And it's going to push out again. Yeah, this core silence are creating problems. And, and uh, yeah. at the very least, though, again, nothing on to Matthew. He's playing it really safe, though. So I mean, look at this damage, though. This is part of the problem with what is now a five willow, basically. She doesn't offer a whole lot against this combo. No kills, but Epileptic Kid and Lil brought dangerously low, and they don't have any salves. Void is out of regen except for his ring of regen. He's got a salve coming now. Okay, and Lil's got three tangos. They're going to get three bounty runes again, too. Wait, Matsu got the other one. They're going to get four. They got four bounty runes. Oh, I thought Save was going to get the top one in the river. Denied. Secret once again coming out of the gate swinging. Yeah, they pinged it out for Nisha, so he knows it's there for his bottle. As they will Bottom finally lane. try and punish Zai. Puppies here, though. They might turn it around. The Void silenced, able to jump back with Arcane Curse. Cog oh, no. stop Lil's TP, and they're going to get a counter kill the other way. Zai not only lives, but finds himself with a plus two. Ah, oh, it's gonna keep Ed Lovett to get down at the bottom. Him and DM on the Mars. Not looking too hot gold wise. Now, it's mid lane. Just... We haven't talked about it too much, but it looks like it is Pugna favored right now. Viper behind by about 300 net worth or so. Was leading in CS, but I guess Nisha has been uh, a little better with the regen, a little more efficient. Six minute run. And who's going to grab it? He's been jungling a lot too on GPK. Ah, there you go. And uh, Nisha also stole some of his jungle camps. So <laughs> numerous okay. things not going his way. There you go. Puppy, bashed up by Epileptic Kid, but Frostbite, he does have a time walk. Puppy tries to sidestep it. Nisha has the decrep. Puppy's actually going to live for a second, but does bait the Void into a death to the mid laner. Yeah, I think we can call that one worth there, uh, as they will grab save up top as well. And that'll be uh, Puppy going down, but losing the inch in the face of Void now for first Pro Prodigy. That hurts so much, though. Like... Void doesn't get the kill on Puppy. He runs all the way to mid lane and then still dies for Speaking it. Speaking of mid lane, of though. Yeah, Nisha gets Viper struck and he's definitely going to fall. Way too much damage. Big rotations. Epileptic Kid actually TP's mid. It's that bottom lane's been so rough that he just wants to get involved in kills. He's level 5. Is he jungling already, I guess? This I mean, is really tough for the versus void. the silencer. I don't think like once the global's there, then he can never play around really with the time walk, right? In any meaningful way, at the very least. Yeah, yeah. Zai can always threaten a kill with any plus one. And as long as Zai keeps the lane static here, they can't really gank him. You know, you yeah, think of a core silencer as being super look vulnerable. Look at this positioning. He's right next to his tower. Yeah, there's nothing vulnerable about this at all. Yeah. He's got two wraith bands, by the way, not null tallies. Yeah, get this that attack is the, speed, uh, baby. This is the new strat for sure. Yeah, I like that. 
Well, Epileptic Kid comes back immediately, starts eating those Doritos. It's just gone. I mean, <laughs> the wave is not moving. This is like the least value safe light I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, this is pretty insane. And it's Zai solo. So now the two supports on Secret are able to help mid move around, and it's creating all this commotion that's I mean, also ask, getting a really like, good lane to Matsu up top. This is why it's not clockwork, right? What's happening yes. right now? Yes, 100%. I can totally see it. It feels like just a counter pick against the boy. Now mid, we're going to see save. Level 3 inch evaporate under the Pugna. Now Nisha takes a Viper Strike. Cursed Crown. Going to be pushed back, but okay for now. GPK isolated in the cogs next to Yapsor, but light on damage for Secret. Now Zai makes the rotation, still has global. And things will peter out before he's able to really do much. So a little bit of a wasted TP, but not the end of the world. That's a good save from Yapsor. I actually thought he might just die to trade his life to keep Nisha alive there. Trapping yourself in with a Viper who's uh, double your level doesn't tend to go very well. Right, they're finally going for it. The wave's pushed out. Zai has gone too far forward, but Yapsor's there to back him up as the supports were coming through with the gank. Yapsor, he'll get stunned up, but the cavalry's arrived. There is a Shadow Realm. Lil will get one reset. There it is. Void, time walk back. He's going for the TP. Not even level <laughs> 6 yet. Meanwhile, Matu level 8 on this lone druid. Yeah, they were close to getting the roar there to cancel his TP as well. Would have stuck him right into that jungle again, even if they didn't Radiant's get the kill. Bottom tower is under attack. But yeah, both of them going for Mask of Madness and uh, Matu. Oh, actually, Epileptic gets moved off into a, the Midas. On top now, Mars does find a kill on Denisha. Nice arena from DM. Dyer's top tower Big is kill under there. Attack. He was Radiant's just straight up jungling, eh? Yeah, he was. He had yep. lost like 300 health jungling. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yep. So, meanwhile, bottom lane, the push continues. Bear makes for an easy tier one tower. Radiant's bottom tower. Even though that kill on the Pugna is nice, it's the gap between the lone Dyer's druid and the void that's so scary right tower. now. A good 50% uh, 50 edge in favor of Matumba Man. Oh, this uh, commitment top, though, if they can get this tower, this would be huge for them because they don't have the arena right now. They're still holding the chrono, but they know they're a little bit behind, and Yapsar doesn't have the hookshot yet. It's like their best chance to actually take this. Oh, it's too many heroes, though. There's the global, though. They're going to be able to kill Mars. Void still be, still might be able to get away. No. TP down for 10. Good chrono. Does connect onto two. But these arcane curse slows keep resetting. Ah, oh, they're not going to get him, I don't think. There's reinforcements now. GPK's here. No, Void dies. Whoa. Stuck in the cogs and evaporates to the Pugna. And now Viper's going to get left behind. This is such a disastrous fight for Verse Pro Prodigy. I, I admit, it's yeah, so I much damage from the Pugna. He's 440. It's a maxed out decrep. I get it. Like, I understand why they want that tower so bad because they're probably not going to get another swing at it. Like, frankly, they know that rotation's coming top. They're going to bring the Lone Druid. They're going to bring the Pugna. This tower's going to go down, and then that, the creep wave's going to be, like, living down here the whole time, right? So they get a little greedy going for it, thinking maybe we can just, like, chrono kill the tower and get out. Uh, but they paid a uh, big price for that one. Yeah. Not respecting the Pugna, who now has an Aether Lens also. Uh, Andy's Tranquil Boots. So as you can see, Nisha healing up his buddies. Did plenty of regen himself. You think you're going to want the mana regen on Pugna, but it turns out Tranquil Boots are pretty damn broken. Yeah, and I thought Zai might go for the Force Staff at the first at the very least, but currently he just has the straight eggs queued up. Really? That's the uh, curse last word become a, it becomes last or a, a AOE. That's what you get. This one's been oh. changed a lot, guys. Yes, it has. Oh, fight up top though. Mars Arena comes down. Good fear from the Willow. This is a cool combo. You can see. Stop punching yourself, puppy. That was a perfect display of Terrorize into Arena. Unfortunately, they're only getting a Crystal Maid. GPK's here. Radiant's he is trying to sustain, but now interrupted. It'll be too much damage. Right, nice. that, that makes it so much more worth it after spending a lot to, to grab that. Got the tier one tower mid as that was happening. So still nice for Verse Pro Prodigy, but classic secret where they still find something. It's always a trade. Next play for Verse Pro Prodigy, though, probably finding this blink on the DM and see if they can start slowing down uh, Matu, or at least uh, trying to grab kills near towers might be the best case scenario for them right now. 
Because if you don't start grabbing these towers soon, it, it feels like you're never gonna get any. Yeah. Jackpot. Doesn't feel like Secret have really even pushed that aggressively yet. They've only taken two tier ones. They're still pretty focused on farm. Uh, the Deso is also not that far away from Matu. Uh, Matu. One Mithril Hammer left. Dyer are scanning. Oh, you know what's actually a sick combo? Is the fact that the last word, when it's AoE, he's going to be hitting multiple heroes, but it also gives you vision over them when you uh, hit them with the curse. So then the Pugna will be able to like start life draining and just like chasing people from a distance, even if they try and fog them. Oh, that is a nice little bonus. Yep, can we finish out uh, maxing the last word now? I don't think I've seen this Agonims on Silencer since it's been changed to this. Seems pretty good though. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, it's, I mean, it used Radiant to be when you, I, well, when I first started playing, it was you would cast Global and it would curse everyone. Uh, and yeah. then they did it with the Glaze, but nice hook on the two here from the Absor. Save in big trouble. The Mars also going down quickly. The Global preventing any kind of counterplay. Puppy with a big ultimate. One TP out. And now the fear on the Lil interrupts his fear and keeps Puppy safe. That's a three for nil. Immediate backfire. Another big fight for Secret. So good at using that global too. I love offensive globals. It's just like Radiant when teams yeah. pick like Batrider and uh, Storm Spirit in Dyer's combination with the Silencer. Those kind of plays are uh, so much more beneficial than like trying to cancel uh, some sort of a, a dive or something. With oh, it, right? Boyd dying fast. Nice time walk. Regains all the HP. Both sides with some reinforcements, but they'll just back up. He's almost just messing with them there. It felt like, yeah. Radiant's Way back in the day, wasn't there a point when Silencer's Ags just made Global last longer? Uh, you know, I was about to say, I think second. that's actually what it was when I first started. I, I think I'm, you might be right. Because it was notoriously bad. Like, it's already yeah. six seconds. Like, yeah, I think that's uh, when I first started playing what it was, and then it got changed into the curse one. Yeah. And then Glaives, and then now this. The Glaives one was a little underwhelming. So I think it was the you... talent, right? Oh, wait, no, he doesn't have that talent anymore. Oh, okay. They used to, it made a pure spell immunity, I think, right? You could do a whole history class on silencer changes, I'd say. <laughs> Weird fight well, here, though. Virtus Pro Prodigy, they just back up. Thought there might be an initiation angle there for the clockwork, but saves the hook shot. Secret, don't go for it. I must have them all. Man, Zai, this is like the best hero to play for him. I gotta say, like at least in terms of his mental health, like this is Dyer's how fun is this game? Is you just, Dyer's he's being sent to every spot. free lane. That's what, every time that there's a creep wave coming close to a tower, they're like, hey Zai, could you please go farm that man? Like, I, it's not safe for you up front. You're a silencer. Let Matu <laughs> go in here with his bear. You know, we gotta get some serious gold on our, our golden boy carry here. This is like silencer paradise. Yeah. Usually you're getting picked on. Usually there's people running at you. You feel like this this tall version of Zeus that just get dies when somebody gets on top of you. He's two zero and five. He's got fourteen int. They're all under it's award here. If they can't punish minutes. this, this feels awful. They gotta go for something here. This is huge though. Desolator comes out onto the bear. And the void's still really light on damage trend. He's got this Midas, he's got the treads. Doesn't yeah, even puppy. have the mask of madness yet. Puppy smokes it out instantly. He's just like, yeah, okay, there's definitely a ward up there because like, they were all sitting there just so clumped. Radiant Missing out on that just feels awful. You have Chrono Radiant and Arena and you couldn't punch everything. Them, but... They are going to five man this mid tower and at least go for a trade here. Uh, the TPs are here if they want it. And there is Global again. Matu to finish that tower and TP back for the defense. It might be too dicey into the Chrono. Yeah. They do get the tier two. Tier one falls. And we'll see where VP Prodigy go. All right, nice job. So they cleaned up uh, GPK at the top tower. Now they get the mid there too. Lil actually taking this tower. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> 500 gold oh. till Silencer Agonims. Well, that's going to help him on his way, huh? The Philosopher's Stone. Right, he dishes it instantly. <laughs> He's going to give it to someone who's not hitting creeps the entire time. Yeah, that sounds like a puppy item. Matu has a Moon Shard queued up. That's pretty wild. Deso Moon Shard on the bear. This is some uh, game-ending strats here, it feels like. Yeah. 
Took How fast are the BKBs going to be here? Not very quickly for the Radiant, huh? This Agnum is going to be quite brutal. Do they have any Dispel? They don't. Right? I mean, they have a Viper. He's not buying Dispel. Void, he's just going to go straight for the BKB next. So, yeah, we don't have anything to work with. They're going to find DM up here. Hookshot <laughs> fires. No connection. DM is in deep, but they've got no eyes. The last word AOE is really big, too. The scepter radius is 600. Oh, that's I was going to ask that, actually. Yeah, that's, that's huge. That's a giant AOE. Radius of 600? How is that possible? I feel like I'm misreading that. Scepter radius 600. That's insane. That can't be right. That would be like the same as an aura. Yeah, that's. All right, it's radius 600. That's what it says. Could be a bad tooltip. No, I'm not. Uh, uh, that's humongous. So. No, that's what's on the wiki, too. All right. So you basically have two globals. Uh, that's kind of what it comes down to, I guess, huh? I mean, not exactly global, but if it's a clustered up team fight, you could definitely hit two or three heroes with that. Power cogs, though. Yapsor takes a cursed crown. No follow up. This is definitely a game where the missteps can happen, though, right? They're, they're playing a rather clumped, like, push into high ground kind of force to go for buildings on the earlier end style versus Arena and Chrono. And yeah. versus one AoE spell like that, it can be okay because you can, like, really spread yourselves before that first Chrono or Arena happens. But sometimes the Arena drops, you all kind of crowd around it, trying to, like, decrypt from outside or throw in, a, you know, one Crystal Nova so that I saw the attack speed to save my ally who's in there. Dyer's and suddenly Void jumps in and catches the three of you outside trying to help the Arena people. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Virtus Pro Prodigy have a draft that has some options. Even though this is looking difficult, they are behind by a good amount. They have the tools. Will they Where make Matu it go? Is, man. I know. Oh my god, he was they're so close to them! They're so scared. <laughs> Virtus Pro Prodigy right now, they're hesitating. They just don't have the intel. I mean, look at their vision. They're pretty blind on the map right now. They've got very defensive wards, so they just don't know. It's hard to tell the difference between bait and an overextension. Damn, Brave I mean, get punished again. Uh, understandably yeah, so, but they've got to make a play at some point. Oh, this is the Deso Bear. Matu just straight up tanking into the bear, doesn't have to stop swinging. Yeah, that's going to be a quick Roche, uncontested. I don't even know if VP Prodigy are aware. Uh, definitely not. They scan bottom. So Matu gets himself a second life. All right, downsides, no PTKBs. Upsides, there's no four staff yet onto Zai, so he doesn't have a save potential if they can get onto him. There's a glimmer on Poppy. Radiance Middle Tower. Uh, and then they have to worry about Blink Yules on Nisha. That part's gonna be annoying. As save is just playing the Vanguard here for DM. It doesn't even work though. They're gonna get him Done. and the Bodyguard. Great. Oh, but wait for the Absor. TP out. There's a Yule Scepter. They've still got him. This is gonna be an easy two for nil. Rough stuff for Virtus Pro Poppy. He's got Epileptic. He's gonna start lurking. Look, he's warding on the other side. Oh, Chrono used defensively, and now Nisha gets here with the blink. Boy, does have another time walk, but Global comes out. Oh my god, Nisha he doesn't know that the Yules. The, trees. the Yules was on cooldown. He could have lived. Ah, oh, he's still gonna live. And TP's out. Alright. Well, global for Chrono. At least they trade cooldowns, and at least the Void lives. But Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Purely defensive plays. <laughs> this is uh, getting really tough for Virtus Pro. They're falling farther and farther behind now, Trent. It's 90% uh, in Secret's favor, according to Dota Plus right now. And usually Dota Plus is pretty darn biased towards Faceless Void. That's true. Likes the purple heroes. Like those really are winners, you know? And that moon shard's coming, so Matsu's also about to hit a big power spike. Radiant jungle. Mars Arena comes down. They have found Zai. Puppy also been perhaps in trouble, but a defensive decrep. That'll save Zai, and they'll leave Puppy high and dry. He buys back now. 
Man, Retreat from Bird Pro. Squishy. He has 700 more HP than Mars. Oh, is Mars in trouble here? Radiance top top DM might still get out. Another decrep hit. Ty comes in. Oh, hook shot hits defensively. They'll still get the kill. Yeah, he just didn't want Yasuo to steal his kill. That's all that was. That was intentional. Uh, Zai doesn't make mistakes to see. <laughs> well, you save like. also died. If you blinked, you missed it. It's funny how in some games, Ench looks so tanky when you have all these right clickers, and then against the magic damage of somebody like Pugna, she is just food. I love Ench, but not able to do a lot this game. Not for Steve, that's for sure. Are fortified. So now that Moon Shard's out, the Pugna's here, they force the Glyph. No Chrono for another 35 seconds. Global is back, though. Void split pushing up top. Secret playing this very patiently. And they still have the global, so... And they still don't have BKBs. Although I play the kid, uh, yeah, he's yeah. almost on the Manta, so... He, he just abandoned ship. He's like, BKB is not going to be enough. I need some damage too. Manta's a little bit more of a hybrid item. Oh, well, unfortunately, he kind of needed BKB though because of the curse, right? Oh yeah. One dispel is yeah. not oh, enough. Well. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And it's up. Mars still very far away, and Viper, he actually went to the Defiance. Radiant are scanning. And now Secret able to just choke the map. You know, they're playing this position where if they get kills, great. If they don't, they know they're out farming Virtus Pro Prodigy, pushing all the lanes in, stealing all the neutrals. Not a huge amount of pressure on the Dyer right now, though they do still have the Aegis for another 50 seconds and might try to make use of that. You know, if they manage to throw a high ground push, though, we could find another game where Puppy finds a heart, you know? Hey, that's true. He's getting some, some decent gold. He's got the Philosopher's Stone. Get this man a heart. Oh, hook shot. Close range. Connects on two. Follow up. Global. They're not going to have enough damage to kill the Void, but the bear is here. They need another silence. Rule Scepter as DM jumps in. Very nice ultimate. Anisha stunned up and he'll fall. First casualty of this fight. Now the turn on to DM. Saves already fallen, and they will make it a one for two. <laughs> Couldn't find like the everything hitting, right? The chrono and the arena. They, they can't get it all in sync. They didn't waste the chrono though. So no, true. And Nisha was a pretty valuable kill. Ends up being an even gold exchange, actually slightly favoring Burns Pro Prodigy. And that's the Aegis gone now as Matu gets one step closer to his Skull Basher. I mean, I'm just seeing him trap the silencer and then Zai pops Essence Ring and has 2200 HP and then he just stands there and wails into you with pure damage. And it's just like, who's trapped in with who, man? Yes, he looks pretty comfortable in there for the most part. Up to 20 int now. <laughs> Puppy denies the obs, nice. <laughs> little things, right? Hell yeah. Well, I actually Those things give up little things when you're losing. It's even better when you're winning. So those things give a pretty big bounty. That's recovery gold, man. It's probably worth more than saves life. That's uh, that's Willow's blink dagger right there. Chrono does connect on the Matsu. Do they have the damage to make this work? Definitely not. Pugged on the outside, heals him up as GPK gets turned on. Now Void has to run defensively. Save is going to stand his ground and fall. A two for nil, but it was Virtus Pro that were the aggressors. And now that Chrono's on cooldown with Global coming up in 20 seconds. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. They have so many just uh, straight up annoying spells to play around. Between the the fear from the bear, the Radiant's save from the Pugna via Decrept or the heal, this AoE curse, and then you always have to be Radiant's freaked out about a clockwork hook coming from some random angle. Yep. Viper down for another 15 seconds. High ground we go. No glyph for the Radiant, so the bear is going to shred through this. First crown actually does connect on the Zai. No follow up though. Save walks in, has to walk out immediately. Bear pressing forward. Nice fear. DM hook shotted. Low. Puppy jumps in and actually gets the freeze on to save with a nice ulti. DM and save both buy back as the global flies. And Puppy TP's home. Now you 
Yeah, some more valuable though. Out. Nice spear. Spear from the Willow will stop Nisha from any kind of save. And Zai, no four stack. Another 15 seconds on cooldown, but a great savage roar. Oh, they got him. The spear. It's a nice spear, and now Zai's going to be stuck. Yep, Epileptic gets on and pops the Basket Madness, and he's going down. So a little punishment. They get the All right. three. Virtus Pro Prodigy hold, but they do have to use a couple of buybacks. Who did the gold go to, though? Uh, Virtus Pro Prodigy. Yeah, but no, I mean, like, what heroes? This will come uh, in. Yeah, Viper, mostly. He got 500. Mars got 275. Still a pretty solid lead here for Secret, but... I mean, again, you have to just get rid of the Secret with these damn heroes. Like, they have, like, four support heroes and a, a lone druid, basically. You know, these are... <laughs> Obviously, now Pogda, we get the core quite a bit, too, but it's just, like, so many squishy heroes, and yet they're still so yeah. confident in their maneuvers. I mean, look at Nisha. I mean, he's died a couple of times, but he's also picked up so many kills that it feels worth it for him to play this aggressive and keep Virtus Pro Prodigy stuck on their side of the map. I mean, they're making a silly amount of space for this lone druid. Lil is lurking with the Veil and level 2 Bedlam. But they, they don't like it. They don't know how many heroes are there. And the hook shot was close enough that probably wasn't going to be a very good play. 20 to 10. 12k net worth favor. Secrets game to lose right now. Hey, this bear is just so scary. The BKB, 10 seconds, still sitting on it. Some nice value items on Virtus Pro Prodigy. Uh, they've got the Blink Glimmer Cape on Mars. They do have the Blink Veil now on Willow. Vipers got Atos, Halberd, Pipe of Insight. It looks like they want to smoke. Yeah, they're putting down some sentries, trying to cover things. Not sure if it was spotted. Atu looks like he's trying to pop a smoke positioning behind the tree line. The bear sitting right there. Although it's fine like they have a four staff to save him. I mean, I guess his eyes here now, so. There's a glimmer cape on Puppy also. This is kind of awkward. Virtus Pro Prodigy hesitating. DM uses the glimmer cape to try and initiate. They see Matsu. There's the arena. They hit him with a spear, but he's so tanky. He's already gotten off the true form. And instead, the bear is just going to lay into him. Global silence as the hook shot comes in from Yapsor. Cogs on two, and he'll force staff out. GK now stuck a bit far forward. Puppy loses his ultimate, but the first casualty of war will be GPK. And now they're going to find the Mars. I don't think DM's surviving this one. Doesn't even have enough mana, or enough mana rather, to use that glimmer cape. Two cores dead, no buyback. Still, Chrono available. They just can't get a win this game, man. <laughs> like, how long did they just camp that stupid bounty room at 30 minutes? Matu just knows that the fight's gonna occur, but with all the heroes nearby and the global to cover him, like, he knows he's just gonna be completely fine. I think Secret or Ab did reading. Like, there's only a couple plays Virtus Pro can make right now. They'll still save again on the low ground, but one of them is going to be smoke into the triangle and try to take it back for the rune. So Matsu with perfect positioning, true form at the ready. Now high ground we go. Three heroes sidelined again. No buyback. Not even save has it. The Viper will respawn, but too late to save the mid barracks. Radiant's middle barracks has fallen. Oh, just the first one to fall here as uh, the Roche is ready to be claimed by Secret. They want to back up to it with the bear. Pretty cool idea from Zai. He's got Refresher queued up next. So a true double global, but then he'll also be able to do double AOE last word, which is just an insane amount of silence. Didn't he use uh, Disarm at one point? Am I crazy? It totally did, right? I'm pretty sure there was a point where it did. Yeah. I don't that, remember that how long we really it busted. <laughs> it's been a hot minute. Wow. Very easy roast taken here. Uh, Aegis yep. again on Matu, Cheese on Zai. And Zai has the spider oh. legs, which is a fantastic item for this place. And Radiant a double scan. damage rune, Trent. Maybe the most important of all. He's going to park the bear over here. They're going to wait until they're ready to go. And then they are going to push. There it is. El Doge, he's got the DD. They're going to find one here. It is Puppy. They dust him up through the Glimmer Cave. First Puppy's round. Down. Okay, I'm taking your base. Yeah, we'll call that bait. 
Yeah, no Radiant, Radiant Glyph, man. Top Barracks evaporate under the double damage. Meanwhile, back mid, Yapstor still playing with Virtus Pro Prodigy. Save on the run. He's going to get bursted down again. And now GPK, he's also going to be in big trouble. There is just no fight here for Virtus Pro Prodigy. That's two sidelined again. They've already used... Oh, that was the puppy buyback. There's just no damage, man. Like, they just got nothing. They got an arena, they got chrono, it doesn't matter. Radiance middle Zion Spider in his way up here. He's an arachnid. Boy, I mean, let's at least use one chrono. There's the BKB. He gets stunned. Epileptic Kid has to time walk defensively. I think you're right. I don't think the chrono changes that much, but it's still a shame to see a team with a faceless boy not be able to use chrono sphere to do anything throughout the entire mid game. Did he like, cast two defensive chronos? I think so. Like, like every time.